Come on. Oh, folks, are you ready for this? Now, listen, I'm I'm not. I'm not huge into the lines and, and over-unders and everything like that, but I will tell you, I scan them, and I got to this game. Arkansas, Texas A&M, neutral site, Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium, A&M favored by two with an over-under of 49? I'm sorry. What? I, did, I, I gave it a double look. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Do they know something I don't? And so I dug into it, and I'm starting to think to myself, hold on, hold on, hold on. This certainly isn't the A&M team that, that I've seen the last two weeks against App State and Miami, a team that could not gain 200 yards against App State, that could not gain 300 yards against Miami. This is surely not the team that hasn't even thrown for, in cumulative over the last two games, 250 yards. Again, in in two games, with a coach who's supposed to be offensive oriented, with some of the best talent in the country, in particular at the skill positions, certainly, certainly this is not the team that is favored against Arkansas, a top ten team. Maybe they're just paying too much attention to the Bobby Petrino Bowl uh, the week before, but this doesn't make any sense. And let me tell you why. Texas A&M is 12th right now in the SEC stop in the run. They gave up 175 yards against Miami. They gave up 180 yards rushing against App State. App State controlled the game on the ground so well that they had 40 minutes time of possession, and Texas A&M only snapped it about 40 times. I think it was 41 times in that game. Why? Because they couldn't stop them on the ground. Guess what Arkansas can do? Run the ball. This is the second-best rushing team in the SEC, and they've had 200 yards on the ground in every single one of their games. Raheem Sanders is a guy that I really like. You think Coach Pittman doesn't have a great ground attack? You don't think that this is going to be a fast, low-scoring affair when AM can't stop the run, and that's exactly what Arkansas wants to do? Meanwhile, on the other side, how do you beat AM? You force the game into the passing game's hands, into the quarterback's hands. You take away their ability to run the football. Guess who's the best rush defense in the SEC? Arkansas. Guess what they're going to do? Stop the run at rushing attack for Texas AM, which means we're going to be sitting there with who? Max Johnson, Haynes King, and they're going to have to beat Arkansas in a neutral site throwing the ball? Wait, what? Ain't him favored by two? That's Crazy. Give me Arkansas all day long outright. Then the total, they say 49 on the total. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that AM in all of their games this year, and we're talking cupcakes, we're talking then those tight games, App State and Miami, total points in AM games, 88. That's total over three games. And all of a sudden, the defensive-oriented Arkansas team that runs the ball against a defense that can't stop the run, and the over-under is 49. The total's 49? I mean, Arkansas and the under all day long. Book it. Book it. I think Arkansas wins that game. I think that last week was a blip on the radar, and I think that they go out there and they win that game. This is a team that understands how to play tough. They understand how to play physical, and I think that they beat AM. If AM has to throw the ball to win, they will lose the game. App State proved that. The game was put into the hands of the quarterback, and they could not succeed. Their passing game is not detailed enough. Their quarterbacks are not detailed enough. They don't throw the ball on time. They aren't accurate, and they don't protect well up front. That's a, that is a recipe for an Arkansas win. I'm calling it. Arkansas wins that one. I know they're higher ranked. They're 10th in the country. A&M is 23rd. But again, A&M favored. That is an upset all day long. Arkansas, and give me the under. I love this game. This is a phenomenal game. Oregon State is quietly so sound, all right? And and I love what Jonathan Smith, their head coach, has done up there. By the way, he's going to be in the conversation for all of the openings this year, whether it's Nebraska right now, whether it's Arizona State right now. Jonathan Smith is going to get looked at because of what he's doing at Oregon State. This is historically a place that USC does not go and play well. So they're on the road. They're six-and-a-half-point favorites. Last year, the Beavs were 6-0 and at home. That included a win over Washington and Utah, the Pac-12 champ. This is a team that plays really well at home. I don't think USC is going to be able to just 
roll up there and blow the doors off them with their offense. Now, they're probably going to score some points, but one of the reasons why USC has been able to be so effective is that while their defense is not stopping anybody, they're at least gaining some turnovers. They're number one in the country in turnover margin, have not turned the ball over, and they've gotten 10 takeaways. So you can make a strong argument that if if you as an opponent are just careful with the ball and you don't give it to them and you don't give that offense extra possessions, that you're going to have a chance to win the game. And Oregon State, they're second in the Pac-12 in turnover margin, and they've only turned the ball over three times. So this is a team that I don't think is going to beat themselves. They're well coached. They're tough at home. 6-0 and last year. Wins over Washington. Win over Utah. This is not going to be an easy game for USC. In fact, I think this is going to be their, their most adversity that they face. It's not going to be easy for them. And, and you never know. The last time I saw Caleb Williams in real adversity, it was at Baylor, a game that Gus and I called late last year for Oklahoma, and he did not play well. He did not play well. They faced adversity, it was either the week before or two weeks before, against Iowa State. He did not play well then either. We've seen him in some pressure-packed situations, and I don't count the bowl game as pressure-packed because that's still an exhibition. I, he has not played well in big moments. Now this is going to be a big moment. There's all sorts of ex- expectations on USC from, in part, guys like me who have said, hey, this might be a playoff year, and it might, and it might. I'm just telling you, they don't have room for error on their offense. If they turn it over and don't get turnovers, if they lose the turnover battle, they will lose this week against Oregon State. That's where the game is going to be won and lost. They're favored by six and a half. I think it's going to be closer than that. Oregon State is good at home. They're well coached. And if they don't turn it over, they might beat the Trojans. They might beat the Trojans. That's my almost upset of the week. And I'm talking outright, by the way, outright. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.